Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss intercompany inventory sale. What is this topic? Well, intercompany inventory sale is when we have a parent company and a subsidiary. Now, the parent company might sell inventory to the subsidiary or the subsidiary might sell inventory to the parent company. As long as this transaction is within the parent and the subsidiary's subsidiary parameters. What does that mean? It means as long as the inventory is not sold to an outsider, for example, the parent company did not sell this inventory to a third party, or the subsidiary did not sell this inventory to a third party outside this box, what happened actually is there was a transfer of inventory in, in, inside the company. Why? Because the parent and the subsidiaries are consolidating. So when they sell to each other and no sale is conducted, is is no inventory is sold to a third party, then it's merely transfer of inventory between the two. As a result, we don't recognize any profit. Now, if the inventory is sold to a third party, then a profit is recognized. If some of the inventory is sold and the other is not, then we're going to have to have a deferred profit. And we'll discuss all these topics in this session. Let's go ahead and get started. Basically, the central theme is the profit cannot be recognized until the goods are finally sold to an unrelated party. I call it third party. The reason I call it third because I'm assuming parent and sub. Now, if the sub also sold to another sub that's part of this group, then it's still not a third party. Third party means unrelated party, but I call it third to kind of make the point it's parent sub and we have a third outside party. Okay, so, but however, this is what we have to keep in mind. From a record keeping perspective, both parent and subsidiaries record sale and purchase. Now, when we have the parent and when we have the sub, remember each one of them, they have their own accounting system and you have to keep that in mind. So for example, if the parent sold to the sub, we have a sale here, we have a purchase here. If the sub sale to the parent, we have a sale here and we have a purchase here. So each company, because they're independent, they keep the record but it's merely a transfer of inventory for the overall group, for the overall company. Now, the consolidated financial statement, when we consolidate between the two, it should reflect the transfer of inventory if it's not sold to an outside party. This is, this is the, and the reason I'm emphasizing the theme, because if you understand the concept, it's easier to start to see the journal entries because it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So once again, if we have a parent selling to a sub, as long as it's inside this box, the sub did not sell to an outsider, nothing really happened. We have to eliminate this entry, the sale and the purchase because it's merely a transfer of inventory. And the same concept if the sub sold to the inventory. Now, the best way to start to illustrate this concept is to actually look at an example. I'm going to start with a simple example, as always, to illustrate the point get you familiar with the journal entries, then we will work another more challenging, we'll add scenarios to the example to make it more challenging and to make the point uh, of the lesson. So we have a parent company sold 80,000 of inventory to a sub. The cost for the parent company is 50,000. So first we're gonna look at the journal entries from the parent company. What would the parent company do? The parent company will debit cash, assuming they debited cash. Now, if they don't debit cash, they will debit something gold due from sub, which is a receivable, which is a receivable from the sub, or they simply have an account receivable, just in case in your textbook or in your CPA review course, use different language, but I'm going to keep it simple and using cash. So it could be due from sub or account receivable. They will credit sales, they will debit cost of goods sold, and they will credit inventory. The sub, the subsidiary, they will debit either inventory or they're using the periodic purchases and they will credit cash, or they will credit accounts payable if they bought it on account or due to parent if they use due to do from if the company uses this now here's what we're going to assume we're going to assume that the subsidiary did not sell anything from this inventory so this is the first assumption we are going to make to keep this example simple to kind of get you warmed up so simply put they purchased the inventory and they did not sell it to an outside party so they did not sell it there was no sale well what's going to happen then when we consolidate we're going to have to assume this sale did not exist Okay, that's the first thing. This did not happen, so we have to kind of do something to make this go away. And we're going to have to make an adjustment to reflect the original orig the original cost for the inventory because now, based on the subsidiary, if we look at the subsidiary, it looks as we have inventory with a cost of 80000 That's wrong. That's not true. Our inventory has a cost of fifty. 
not not 80,000. So we have to fix this problem. How do we fix this problem? Let's see. How do we fix this problem? Let's start step by step. Well, let's see what, what problem fix itself. We have credit, debit to cash, credit to cash. Basically, those naturally, they will eliminate each other. We have sales of 80,000. We have credit sales. Is this a legitimate sales? And the reason is not. You cannot report the sales when you do the consolidation. So we have to debit. We have to debit sales. We have to get rid of sales. We also have Cost of goods sold of 50,000. Do we really have cost of goods sold of 50,000? And the answer is no, we don't. This cost of goods sold was related, related to the sale and the sale is not really a good sale. So we have to credit cost of goods sold. One more problem we have. We have, if we look at our inventory overall for the whole company, if we look at it that way, we have inventory of 80, inventory of, I'm uh, sorry, inventory debit of 80 on the sub, and I'm gonna combine the two inventory, credit at 50 on the parent. We have 30,000 in access inventory. What do we have to do with this access 30,000? And this is basically, well, it's, we have, you can look at this 30,000 access inventory in two ways. You can say it's, it's the same thing. You can say this is access inventory. That's one thing. You can call it access inventory, which is, which it is. Our inventory is inflated by 30,000. Or you can say this 30,000 is the profit for the parent, profit for parent how so let me show you the parent recorded sales which they did on their books they would still record the sale of 80,000 they recorded cost of goods sold of 50 they have a profit of 30 so this profit is this inventory here so whether you say it's an excess profit from the parent or you say it's inflated inventory it doesn't really matter we have to remove that 30,000 of inventory therefore we credit inventory for 30,000 let me show you the journal entry that we prepared. So this way you are familiar with this. So this is the journal entry. The, the 30,000, we said cash is gone. We debit sales, 30,000. Sales is gone. We credit cost of goods sold, 50,000. This is gone. And what we need to do here, we need to credit inventory an additional 30,000 to get rid of the, uh, to get rid of the excess inventory, to get rid of the access inventory so the inventory is reported at 50,000 so this is the elimination entry what did we assume here we assume that nothing was sold to the outsider so we have to kind of eliminate everything and this is exactly what we did now in some books or in some cost accounting um, not cost accounting some advanced accounting courses in some books or some CPA review course they will combine those two they will combine those two and they will debit sales and credit cost of goods sold for the total because they assume you know once it's so, once it's once it's on the subsidiary it's sold so first they assume it's sold therefore the whole thing was cost of goods sold therefore they debit sales credit cost of goods sold so this is alternative alternative way of looking at it. So this is one way to look at it. Maybe your textbook do it in two steps. Maybe your textbook first, they assume they reverse the sales and they assume everything is sold. Then then they remove the deferred gross profit. Then they debit cost of goods sold. Then they would reduce inventory. Then they will credit debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory, which is if you take those two entries, it's the same thing as this. And take a second and look at it. Those are the same two entries, except in your book, first they kind of debit sales and debit cost of goods sold for the full amount, then they find out that there's $30,000 of deferred profit. We have to kind of back out to defer intra-company gross profit. We do so. Uh, we increase cost of goods sold. And once increased cost of goods sold, we reduce profit and we credit inventory to reduce inventory. So this 30,000 reduced reduction in inventory is to re reduce the inventory. And as a result, what happened is you increased cost of goods sold, which is you eliminated your profit. Again, this you don't do both you either do this your textbook will show this or it will show this i, I want to make sure i cover both this way you are covered now one more thing i want you i want to make sure you are very familiar with before we proceed in this one is uh, this formula here how to compute cost of goods sold beginning inventory plus purchases equal the goods available for sale then we deduct ending inventory from goods available for sale to get to cost of goods sold make sure you know this in formula inside out now Here's what we need to know. If your if your ending inventory goes up, your cost of goods sold goes down. And you can use numbers to say this. There is a negative relationship between ending inventory and cost of goods sold. So 
in your textbook or in your CPA review course, what they might be using, they might be they might be adjusting inventory. Remember, every time we increase ending inventory, every time we increase ending inventory, we reduce cost of goods sold. And the opposite is true. If we reduce ending inventory, we increase cost of goods sold. And if we increase cost of goods sold, we reduce profit. OK, so make sure you know this. Make sure you know this. OK, now here's what we need to show. So that's why I'm showing you here. What happened here is we is we reduce. So notice here, just to kind of show you this point in this problem, we credited inventory. So ending inventory went down as a result. Cost of goods sold went up as a result. The thirty thousand dollar is gone. The thirty thousand profit is gone. Now, sometimes in some textbook, what they use, they adjust. Sometimes you have to adjust beginning inventory. The relationship be, be, between beginning inventory and cost of goods sold is a positive relationship. What does that mean? It means every time you reduce beginning inventory, you redu sorry, you reduce. Every time you reduce beginning inventory, you reduce cost of goods sold. Okay, they they work together, and every time you increase beginning inventory you increase cost of goods sold and the reason i'm mentioning this once again because we're going to use beginning and adjusting beginning inventory but also it's something that you critically need to know because this is how they try to trick you on the exam now let's move on to the next option the next option is the subsidiaries bought this inventory well obviously they bought them but they don't plan to hold them forever in this example we assume they they purchased them but they did not sell them so now we have to work with the example where they actually sell the inventory some of it if they sell all of it it's easy if they sell some of it there's some complication we're going to assume they sell some of it but before we proceed i would like to remind you to show you how to sell part of it whether you are a student or a cpa candidate take a look at my website farhatlectures.com the reason you are watching this is because you are either a student or a cpa candidate looking for something and you found me that's great i'm glad you did but i can help you further with your cpa review course i don't replace your course that's not my intent nor your accounting course I can help you understand the material better. I have lectures, multiple choice, true, false, that, that helps you with your accounting courses. Everything is organized by chapter. My CPA review material is aligned with your Becker, Wiley, Roger, Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to all previously AI CPA released questions with detailed solution. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. The mere fact that you found it, it's helping you. It might help others. So share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And I started a Facebook group me account called CPA Exam Support Group. By all means, join us so you can connect with other individuals that are studying for the exam. Now the subsidiary, again, what we said is they don't hold the inventory. They want to sell it. Let's assume the subsidiary sold 60000 out of the 80000 Remember, they purchased, this, this is the entry from the prior slide, they purchased 80,000 of inventory. Now they sold 60,000 and they sold it for 110. It doesn't matter what they sold it for, but we're going to assume for 110. Now, the subsidiary will have to journalize the sale. Why? Because now this is a revenue recognition uh, process that has been completed. So the revenue recognition has been completed for 60,000. This is what the subsidiary would do. They will debit cash 110 or they will debit account receivable. If they sold it on account, they will credit sales 110. Then they will debit cost of goods sold 60,000. They will credit inventory 60,000. Let's now take a look at the sub inventory. The inventory, they originally recorded 80,000 when they purchased it from us. Now they sold it to an outside party of 60,000. They have inventory left of 20,000. Good. This inventory is an interrelated inventory. Why? Because it's purchased from the parent company. Part of this inventory is actual inventory and part of it is profit. How do we know which part, which part of it is profit, which part of it is inventory? Because this 20,000 is inflated inventory, inflated inventory. Well, we have to compute the gross profit of the parent company. The parent company sold you for sold you the, the, the inventory for eighty thousand. We said we have a cost of fifty. So cost fifty divided by eighty. The gross profit percentage for the parent company is thirty six point five percent. What does that mean? It means part of your inventory is profit, and that profit is thirty seven point five. What does that mean? It means of that twenty thousand twenty thousand seven thousand five hundred is profit. And the remainder, which is 12,500, is actual inventory. Again, 
the 20,000 of inventory, this is inventory on the sub books, it's inflated. It's inflated because it has a profit portion and an actual inventory portion. So what do we have to do? We have to fix this. We, we cannot report the inventory at 20,000 at the end of the year because we still have 20,000 of inventory. And if we sold everything, then there's nothing to worry about. If we sold everything, we sold everything. For example, if we sold the whole 80,000 for 150, we'll debit cash 150, credit sales 150, debit cost of goods sold 80, credit inventory 80, and we have no inventory to worry about. Practically, it will be easy peasy problem. But we have to worry about this 20,000. Now we have to look at the adjusting entry that we have to make elimination entry to take care of this 7500 and report the, the proper numbers on the financial statements on the consolidated financial statements. so i'm going to have three columns for you what should we report on the consolidated financial statements what's reported on the parent company what's reported on the sub and i'm going to show you what adjustment do we need to make let's start the parent has a sales of eighty thousand. correct this is this is the sales of eighty thousand the sub has a sale of 110,000. Well, the sub has this sale to an outside party. In your opinion, which of these sales should appear on the consolidated financial statement? And I hope you know that only the sale to an outsider should appear because remember this parent company sale is an interrelated party. Therefore, what we have to do, we have to debit debit sales 80,000. If we debit sales 80,000, this is gone. What's left is the 110 it doesn't matter what's left what's what's whatever is this could be 110 could be five zillion okay it doesn't matter what we sell to an outsider is what's left what's reported on the financial statement consolidated financial statement therefore now we are starting to prepare the elimination entries we're going to debit sales this is debit sales of eighty let let's take a look at inventory how much inventory is on the parents company for that for that inventory and the reason is zero there's no inventory on the parents company because they transfer it to the sub the sub has inventory of 20,000 this one right here the sub has inventory of 20,000 is this really true is this how much we need to report on the consolidated financial statement and the answer is no we need to report only 12,500 12,500 right here well if that's the case we need to credit our inventory credit our inventory 7500 by crediting inventory 5500 we would report inventory 12500 remember what is this credit inventory this is by this credit is deferring the profit so by crediting inventory remember crediting inventory means what means reducing inventory means reducing inventory what does it mean reducing inventory it means increasing remember what i told you when you reduce your ending inventory you increase cost of goods sold what does that mean if you increase cost of goods sold it means you're lowering your profit i hope this makes sense so the reason why we credit inventory uh, by crediting inventory we're deferring profit because by crediting inventory we increase our cost of goods sold and i showed you the formula in the previous slide where i showed you make sure you know re the relationship okay so we're basically uh, uh hitting uh, two birds with one stone or something like this where we reduce inventory to adjust inventory and at the same time we adjust our cost of goods sold now let's talk about cost of goods sold the the subsidiary has 60,000 of cost of goods sold the parent company has 50,000 of cost of goods sold what should we report in cost of goods sold on the consolidated financial statement well, let's think about this. What is the true cost of goods sold? The true cost of goods sold is the true inventory that was sold from has a cost of 50. Remember, the inventory has a cost of 50,000. Okay, this is the original cost of the inventory. And what happened is this, we sold, of the inventory, we sold 60 out of 80. So the subsidiary sold 60 out of 80. So let's see, what is 60 out of 80? Well, what we did is 60 out of 80 is we sold 75% of the inventory because 60,000 divided by 80,000 is 75. Therefore, we need to expense 75% of the original cost of the inventory. And what is that? That's 37,500. That's 37,500. So this is the cost of goods sold that should be on the consolidated financial statement and it's no it's no it's no coincident that 37500 plus 12500 equal to the original cost of 50 okay just it's no coincident that we are 
dealing with the original 50,000. So if we need to come up with 37,500, we have 50 plus 50 plus 60 equal to 110. Of cost of goods sold between the parent and the subsidiary. I'm going to put this in a different color. The uh, let me put it in a different, different color, purple. No, okay, that's fine. Let me do it in purple so this way it appears a little bit more. Okay, so this is 110. What entry do we need to make to make cost of goods sold equal to 37,500? We need to credit cost of goods sold by 72,500. So be careful what you are being asked on the exam. This is the adjustment right here. There's a lot of arrows here. Okay, this is the adjustment. If the, they might ask you what is the adjustment you need to make or they might ask you what entries um, what are the final balances those are the final balances those are the balances that goes on the financial statement the balances on the consolidated financial statement and this column has the adjusting entries let me eliminate everything so we have clearer picture this is the adjusting entry the elimination entry debit sales 80,000 credit cost of goods sold 72,500 credit inventory 7,500 remember by crediting inventory you are hitting two um, two birds with the same stone now again in some textbook what they do they debit sales and credit cost of goods sold for the total of 80,000 if that happens then you have to make another entry debit cost of goods sold increase your cost of goods sold and you reduce inventory for the the third profit so if you so if your textbook debited sales credited cost of goods sold credited cost of goods sold for 80,000 if that's what they did then they have to defer the intercompany profit but this entry here does this by crediting inventory now are we done yet and the answer is no we have to learn about one more entry at least kind of to make sure you're aware of it Assuming FIFO in year two, so we're going we're going to go to year two, and assuming this company uses FIFO first and first out and selling their inventory, what's going to happen is this: you remember from this twenty thousand, we deferred seven thousand five hundred in, in profit. We deferred it in profit. Now, what's going to happen? We assume that year two, if this was if this happened in year one, we deferred the seven thousand five hundred. We're going to assume in year two, we're going to recognize, we're going to sell the inventory and recognize the seven thousand five hundred. So now, what we need to do when we start the year. When we start the year, when we start the year and we sell the inventory, we need to make another entry. And that entry is to reduce the 7,500 because the consolidated financial statement has 7,500 from the prior year in profit. We need to move this profit from year one to year two. How do we do so? We debit beginning retained earnings, we reduce beginning retained earnings, and we credit cost of goods sold by reducing inventory. By crediting cost of goods sold, what you do is you increase your profit for you increase your profit by 7,500. Therefore, you took the 7,500 that was deferred from the prior year and you recognized it in this year. Now, if you're using the equity method for this downstream sale, you will debit investment and subcredit cost of goods sold in case you are dealing with an equity investment method. And we'll deal about the equity investment later on. What should you do now? You should go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs, true false, look at additional resources, subscribe. It's going to help you it's going to help you understand the material better. That's what I do. I help you do better. That's why you are watching me because you needed additional help. I can help you more on farhatlectures.com. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.